Hey guys, it's Katherine Norland. I'm sitting here making lunch and I want to talk to you kind of about how my morning went because I'm always trying to teach you guys and myself how to, to be in charge of our emotions and not let our emotions control us. We can talk about how difficult life is sometimes and how hard it is with the challenges that come our way. And it's easy to sometimes let circumstances that are not ideal, circumstances that are not the way you want them to go, to color your day, to color your morning. And I want to teach you guys when you notice that starting to happen, when you notice your day is kind of spinning out of control because your emotions are, forgive me, I'm like chopping carrots. Oh, Mama's got to multitask. When your emotions aren't the way you want them to go because they're leading you down a path where you're starting to feel hopeless or any emotion that's not a positive one that's making you feel like, like things aren't going to get better. I want you to think of this. Oh, I was like, what is that noise? Hey. Eli brought Timmy's walker in here. So that's the topic at hand today, actually. Hey. So today and the last couple days, Timmy hasn't been, hasn't been walking very well. He's been having difficulty walking and I guess I didn't know how much pain he was in with his legs because it's been a while since he's been having leg problems, probably two and a half years since he had his really extensive leg surgery. And, you know, I, I had fear for a while that he wouldn't be able to walk and just the impact that that was going to have on his life and let's be honest, and on mine, because in the past I used to have to carry him around. Well, y'all, he's 13 years old. He is too big for me to carry him around. He's almost my height. Thank God he's not my weight, or I would never be able to carry him. But so today, he, we got to church and he was in so much leg pain that he couldn't, he couldn't walk. Even with all my, even like leaning on me with my full support, he couldn't, he couldn't walk into church. Eli would not let me put him down. And so I have to put Eli down because Timmy, like he's in pain and he can't walk. So I'm lifting up Timmy. And I'm, I'm carrying him, but Eli is now grabbed onto my leg. And he's like, you know how you have to drag, drags, drag kid? Because they're like hooked onto your leg. And I'm on the sidewalk. It's 100 degrees outside. And I'm like carrying Timmy, who's super heavy. I'm dragging Eli. And it, it just got really overwhelming. And luckily, a couple ladies are like, do you need help? We'll go get help. So they ran to grab a couple ushers. And there just happened to be an off-duty police officer there. And he said, you need help? You know, we can carry one of them or both of them or whatever. So I had them carry Elijah while I carried Timothy. And I sit him down in the pew and this, you know, I've gotten so used to some of the hardships that I, I've had to go through with Timothy that I've sometimes just kind of shut off my emotions to it. But then this lady who went to get me, oh, you want some carrots? No? Okay. This lady that went to go get the... Uh, you want mac and cheese? Okay, so this lady went to get help, and so I have this off-duty police officer carrying Elijah, and I'm carrying Timothy, and this woman, she came back and she saw me, and she had tears in her eyes, and she was crying, and she was so overwhelmed with, like, I guess what I'm dealing with, or what Timmy's dealing with, or I don't know, what somebody's dealing with. And I, I got to the point where my arms were so weak, I felt like I was gonna drop him. So he's, I, 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 I put Eli down in daycare while Timmy was sitting on a bench in the lobby. And then I go, we walk into church and Timmy's like, every step is like so much, like he's about to collapse. And we finally sit down and, and the worship music is going on. And you know, I, I just felt my emotions wanna give in to the difficulties of, how, how things are sometimes. And sometimes when we wanna give in to the difficulties of how things are, so in the moment, if all I'm thinking of is, 
Okay, that was hard carrying Timmy. My arms feel like they're gonna give out of me. I need to start doing more push-ups because I'm not in good enough shape to be carrying a 13-year-old around. So I'm sitting in the pew and I'm trying to like give God all my cares and give him all my worries. And I found myself starting to go to a place where I was starting to have tears. I was starting to be sad. I was starting to be overwhelmed with what if it doesn't get better? What if Timothy's gonna need another full leg surgery and then he's out for months and we're having to carry him everywhere? And what if the, you know, I start to go through these what if scenarios in, in my mind and you guys know how that is. It's not necessarily the thing that happened to you, but it's all the extra that you decide to put with it. A lot of times what we're like freaking out about, okay, so my arms got tired because I had to carry Timothy from the parking lot to church. That's like the what if scenario that is like not what if that is the scenario of what happened where we get into trouble with our emotions is when our mind goes to all the what ifs so i'm sitting there they're you know singing worship songs and i'm thinking well, what if he doesn't get better what if he needs another surgery what if he can't walk again what if he's you know confined to a wheelchair the rest of his life what if what if what if what if what if and that brings you down so fast. That brings you down into depression. That brings you down into tears. It brings you down to fear. Sometimes it brings you to anger. This isn't fair. This isn't right. How could this happen? You know, he doesn't deserve this. Whatever it is that you're you're going to. I, in the past, I mean, I have videos I've never released them where I've like vlogged, just sobbing, just crying on these days that he couldn't walk in the bus even though it's a special needs bus, they wouldn't let me put him in his wheelchair because you needed special permission and you need pre notes from the doctor and they have to okay it first before he can, you know, so he has to, you know, stay home from school because I don't have a special slip from the doctor in advance saying it's okay for him to have his wheelchair on a special needs bus where they have wheelchair capabilities, where the lift goes down, you can wheel right on. It's like all this drama. And I have videos from, from me vlogging that I've never released of me just totally losing it. So upset about, you know, all that we're going through. Mostly him, but I take it personally. The thing is though, Timmy doesn't cry about it. I cry about it. Timmy doesn't complain about it. I complain about it. Timmy isn't mulling it over in his head. I'm mulling it over in my head and it's not even happening to me. So I'm sitting there and I'm worshiping and I'm, I'm thinking in my head all this bad stuff while, while everybody else is worshiping. And Timmy's just sitting there next to me and he just looks tired. He just looks tired because it was so hard for him to walk. And, and I, I'm going through all this trauma in my head. So I'm thinking, oh, he's probably so down. He's probably so defeated. He's probably thinking to himself, what if I never walk again? What if I'm stuck in a wheelchair? What if this... Y'all, he wasn't thinking any of those things. I said to him, Timmy, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, Mom, why? That's the example. Yeah, I'm fine, Mom, why? Like, it didn't even cross his mind that he should be upset for some reason or that he should feel like life isn't fair or that he should, you know? And that's the example we all need. He wasn't stressing out, I was stressing out. And it, it, it just caught me right then and there. I'm like, why am I going down this road of self-pity? Why do any of us go down this road of self-pity and this road of what ifs and da da da? It didn't bother him. And I had to realize, you know what? Why am I letting it bother me when it doesn't even bother him? Yeah, he's had moments where he hasn't been able to control his body. He's had moments where he hasn't been able to control his mind. He's had moments of excruciating pain where he's crying out to me and asking me why, why God won't heal him. And those are the hardest moments. And how do you have an answer? How do you have an answer for that? I don't, because I don't know, you know? I know God will one day, and I'm hoping it's on earth and not just in heaven. But it is what it is. And that's, that's the thing that gets us out of, out of whack. When we say, when we assume, when we live like things should be different than they are. When we, when we should all over ourselves, He should be doing this. He shouldn't be doing that. This shouldn't be this way. God shouldn't allow this. 
Should, should, should. You should all over yourself. I know I've talked about this before, but now I've got a real life scenario. So when I think things should be a different way and when you think things should be a different way than they are, we're not in reality and we're, we're not even in the here and now. We're in the future, we're in the past, we're in where things should be different, but we're not in the now. We're not in the what's happening with the now, so we can't address it. So I realized that, that I was going down that self-pity hole and I stopped. And I went to, and I went, and I, and then after, you know, a half hour of worship songs, I went, I tried to get him to walk to Sunday school. He couldn't walk. I carried him to Sunday school. And I saw people in the congregation looking at me like they don't know, they don't understand. Like, why is she carrying this teenager out of the sanctuary? People don't know. And they can assume whatever they're gonna assume. But I went from like self-pity to feeling, to feeling sad when I saw someone else sad about it to like, you know what, this is reality. This is just the way it is. Well, what am I gonna do about it? Feeling sad isn't gonna change anything. Feeling sad and crying isn't gonna get him to walk better. Feeling sad and worrying and crying isn't gonna heal his leg. So I just said, you know what, this is it. Oh, and who says I have to feel bad about it? If I'm feeling bad about it, that means I think it should be some other way. And that's not the way it is. So we have to be in touch with what is. We have to be in touch with what reality is. And when we, when we got home from church today, he needed help. I'm carrying Elijah in. I unlocked the door. I got to come back and get Timmy. He's, he's trying to balance himself on a tree. And my arms are tired. My arms are tired. So I, I was like, I don't, I, need it. I don't know if I can carry him. So I, I tried to get him to get on my back. I was like, you know what? Let's get you a piggyback ride. We'll get you up here. Y'all, he doesn't know how to do a piggyback. He, 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 with the way his legs are, with the cerebral palsy, he can't spread his legs to go around me. So I got him sort of up on me, and then we end up tumbling to the ground. I, he's, he's going down, and he's got my shirt, and he's taking me with him. Next thing I know, I'm on the floor. I'm on the, well, we're like laying on the sidewalk in the, in the driveway. He's down, I'm down, I'm on top of him, and I'm, <laughs> I'm laughing. That could have been a point for me to break down. That could have been a point for me to be like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be the rest of my life. This is what it's gonna be like, this is so hard. We're laughing, we're laughing. What else, what else are you gonna do? We're laughing. And I, it, it's just like, you know what? You want me to go get your walker? We haven't, he, we haven't used his walker in, in months. He, he uses one at school, we haven't used one. Yeah, go get my walker. So that's it. We don't, we don't cry about what should be, we don't cry, we deal with what is. And what is, is he's currently not walking well. Will he walk better later? Yeah, I hope so, we'll pray so. But if he doesn't, I can't, I can't go down that spiral of self-pity. And I know it's hard as parents, because you want, you want the best for your kids. You want the life where they're gonna have a quote unquote normal life. You want whatever it is. You, you may not be struggling with a child with physical disabilities, but maybe you're struggling with a child with emotional disabilities or mental psych, psychological disabilities, or maybe you're struggling yourself with that and you're beating yourself up and you're saying, why can't you be different? Why can't you be like the other people? Why does this have to throw you, you know, and you're beating yourself up and you're not, you're not being okay with the way things are just because the way things are now doesn't mean they'll be that way in the future. And even if they are, who says you can't be okay? There's a lot of people in the world that are okay, that are fine, that are happy, that have bigger issues than what I'm dealing with and bigger issues than what you're dealing with. So I just wanna give you permission that no matter what you're dealing with, no matter how hard it seems, allow yourself to laugh. Even when you fall down on the ground, you fall down on top of your kid, whatever it is, you fail, you mess up, you say the wrong thing, you chew somebody out, you send them a nasty email, you accuse, whatever it is that you do that you're beating yourself up. You know what, we're all gonna make mistakes. So just laugh about it, laugh about the way things are and just you know, put all your trust in God and say, you know what, things may not change here, but thank God he's with me through it all. Thank God he's with me through all of the struggles, all the trials and all the hardships. And you know, when I'm able, I'll get back up off the driveway, dust myself off, put a Band-Aid on if I need to, and we'll march forward. 
Nobody said life would be without struggles, but thank God he's with us through them all. Take care, guys. Hey, it's Catherine. Thank you for sticking around till the end to watch my video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button. Leave me some comments. I would love to hear from you guys what's going on with you. And there's a little bell button you can click on too so you're always alerted when I upload a new video. Thank you for being part of my community. See you guys in the next video.